back. I have taken you through step one of negotiating with difficult people, which is diagnosing and going to the balcony. Step two, which is stepping to their side and disarming them, making them feel safe. Now we're gonna go into step three, which is reframing the negotiation, helping them see the negotiation from a completely different perspective. You wanna change the negotiation from a problem that you're having to an actual challenge. And that way, a challenge is ongoing. It hasn't turned into a problem yet. So a challenge is a much better approach than officially making it a problem. So in order to do that, there's different ways. You wanna ask problem-solving questions. And those are questions that are open-ended. The why, when, how, what if. Let me give you an example. About a year ago, I had a mentee who had applied to the PhD program for social work at a very famous university here in Southern California. I won't say what it is though. Nevertheless, she was at first denied as a PhD candidate for the social work program. Although she had fabulous recommendations, she had a 3.8 GPA, she had everything that you could ever want in a social work PhD candidate. However, once again, she was rejected. So I made an appointment with the dean, and I wanted to speak to the dean to determine what happened. And he basically told me that she did not have the experience to be able to be part of the social work school. She has worked in the corporate world for quite some time. However, she had created a predictive model that helped save lives of the linemen who go up the poles. The dean didn't think that applied. He thought that her corporate experience didn't apply to the social issues that are out in society that social work individuals help with. So I asked him, why wouldn't it apply? Why not? And he said that corporate issues do not apply to social issues. So I knew I had to reframe the entire negotiation for him if I wanted to accomplish anything, which was to get her either accepted or another try in applying to the graduate program. In the conversation, I went to the what if question. What if the CEO of the organization wrote a letter of recommendation for her showing how her predictive model can be used in common social problems? The CEO of an organization, what do you think about that? So the next thing I did there is I went and I asked for his advice. I put it out there, he didn't respond, and then I said, what do you think about that? Right, that's the next step, ask for their advice. When I asked for his advice, he basically said, I don't know if that would work. So he was a tough one. He was a real, you know, I had used what if questions, why, why not, ask for advice, those are the four top ones, and he was not budging, he was just like, I don't know what to tell you. So I needed to reframe it in a way that made sense to him, in a way that was relative to him, that was important to him, so that he can see it in a way that he would bring value to him and the school. So I reframed it and I said, how about we use her predictive model to predict social problems for social work? Social work, social problems, predictive, does that work? <laughs> and he basically, then his you know, eyebrow kind of rose and he said, hmm, that's something we can talk about. So then he opened himself up. What else can we do with this predictive model? And I said, well, I don't know the predictive model very well, but I know that it can predict. There's much that could be done. So let's talk about this more. So that completely shifted the negotiation. I reframed it, it shifted it to a new negotiation now. It was no longer the negotiation of her not being accepted to the program. It was now a negotiation of how this new predictive model can apply to social change and social causes. The next step of negotiating with the Dean to make sure that we came to an agreement was to build on his ideas, to make sure that whatever the solution was, these were his ideas, not my ideas. People are more invested when they come up with ideas, and your job is to build on their ideas. So I asked the Dean, what kind of ideas are you thinking? What kind of social issues would you like to focus on? This is what you now call clarifying questions. Once you build on their ideas, you wanna to shift to clarifying questions to ensure that whatever information they're giving you, whatever ideas they put on the table, you're clarifying it to make sure that you are very clear. Another big issue in negotiation and why things may not go great is because we make assumptions and we don't clarify what is really going on. We assume the other party's thinking something, we assume that they're okay with a certain situation, and they may not be, therefore, asking clarifying questions as to, tell me a few social issues that you're thinking of. Once they share the social issues, you ask, 
Is this what you meant by the social issue? You ask for an example of the social issue. So you clarify that you're very, very clear. I've seen many situations where there's two negotiations going on, although there should only be one, and that is one party is assuming one thing and is driving the negotiation one way, and the other party is assuming something else and driving the negotiation in a different direction. They each believe that the other person went in a different direction, but the reality is that they were never clear to begin with, and none of them went in a different direction. They just went in their own direction. Another reframing tactic that you could use is actually reframing it where you're putting the focus on the problem and not the person. And what I mean is that as I had the conversation with the dean, he mentioned that there may be other students that were in the corporate world that he may have, I don't wanna say discriminated upon, but discriminated upon and was leaving them out and not even looking at them as possible students because he didn't think that it applied because they were in the corporate world. He hadn't seen that corporate situations and corporate models can actually be adapted to social change and social models. So he asked me, what do you think? Do you think that there's other corporate students out there that have ideas that maybe we've been you know, falling short on or cutting ourselves short? And I wanted to make sure that I was honest with him, but at the same time, I wanted to make sure that we got my mentee in the school and I didn't want to make him mad. So I refocused and reframed his question and I said, well, I think that the social work school can benefit from corporate students and I'm sure there'll be many more opportunities in the future to look at these applications closely and to determine if they can bring value. So you don't necessarily have to dismiss an idea you don't agree with, but you don't have to agree with it either. You can take a different direction where you still address their concern, but you don't necessarily have to put their idea down or make them feel that they did something wrong. The last way that you can reframe a negotiation, you take it from you and me to we. So the dean says, how about you help us be able to identify any of these corporate individuals in the future and maybe we can work together to see if we can create value for society based on corporate models. And he actually reframed it and took it from you and me to we. So throughout the whole process, I had been trying to have him reframe the negotiation. And at the end, he reframed it to us and we to move forward. So that was a very gratifying experience. Okay, next, I'm going to talk to you about building a golden bridge. It's very similar to reframing, but I'll talk to you more in the next lesson.